Spirit Talkers is brought to you by Southwest Trading Company. Southwest Trading Company is located in Tulsa, Oklahoma at 1306 East 11th Street. Southwest Trading Company is an indigenous owned business. They have a lot of items like jewelry, blankets, clothing, art, home decor, collectibles, and so much more. Go follow and like their Facebook page to keep up with all events at the store and where they may be setting up. And once again, that is Southwest Trading Company, located in Tulsa, Oklahoma, 1306 East 11th Street. Let them know Spirit Talkers sent you. Welcome back to Spirit Talkers. It's Jay, guys. We are back today. Got some crazy stuff for you today. And look at Chris's shirt, everybody. If everyone can see that, take it off and show him, Chris. No. Just- <laughs> ah, show him my big old belly like that. <laughs> that real Indian belly. No. <laughs> No, that is a Deadly Uncle shirt from Pendleton, Maine. Mm. I should have wore mine, but they're dirty. Yeah. I've been wearing them. But so shout out to Pendleton, Maine. I don't know if we said that on the last one before, but he may still have a code on his website, PendletonMaine.com. And well, let me make sure that's the right one. You guys be sure to get you the uncle shirt. But you guys got to represent properly if you're an unks. No. <laughs> Make sure that's the right one. He has some other pretty cool shirts, though. I definitely will say that. I encourage you guys to go on his website and look at the ones that he's got. Man, they're wonderful looking shirts. Real good art design. And some of them are pretty hilarious. So check them out. Yeah, I'll post a screenshot of it but yeah it's pendletonmain.com and <clears throat> i don't know if the code is still active or not but if you go on the site and you buy whatever merch you want a bunch of shirts uh, if you use spirit pod all capital letters one word it'll give you i believe 10 percent off your entire purchase or whatever you get and so he's got shirts like that uh he gave he got Chris another one. It was AIM. Bigfoot joins mm-hmm. AIM. Mm-hmm. It was a Bigfoot joining AIM shirt. It was a... Uh, he gave... Or he sent us... Oh, the Dogman shirt. He sent me a Dogman shirt. It was kind of like a R.O. Stein Goosebump style type of book cover. And it said Dogman on it. And the other one was... um. Oh, was it Planet of the Antes? I think it was. God. <laughs> so, and Tyler got two as well, but I can't remember what he has. But go check out PendletonMaine.com and use the code SpiritPod for all of your purchase needs. And you guys remember Christmas is just around the corner. Mm-hmm. And the uh, Unks, he'll be by himself on Christmas Day with the empty tree. Y'all remember that? Well, I'm sitting there. Sad, just pitiful like that because nobody remembers me. Ah, it's that star on top of that tree with nothing on it. I don't know. It just that's all I got on that tree. That pitiful looking tree, it just <laughs> all shabby looking and it's bent. It's brown, not even green. <laughs> got one ball on it. God, <laughs> Christmas ball. Just. Looking sad, <laughs> droopy even. Yeah. 
Eating a Hunger Man TV dinner. God, I know it. <laughs> so you guys remember Unks on Christmas Day. Just put out just a little bit like that. Don't ask much. No. <laughs> <laughs> what else you got on Chris is that it I think that's it yeah yep so Pendleton man even if the code doesn't work still go buy some shirts yeah help him out yeah. uh, he's he's a good guy over there mm-hmm. and get Unks a shirt yeah there you go get give me a shirt a 4X shirt. 4X now <laughs> but right now uh, we got some listener stories that we have been sent. Uh, some were on our Facebook account. They don't really show up. We have a lot of messages on there. So they kind of get pushed back. So I took the time to look back to make sure everybody's was read. And there's a few that came through that was sent around before Halloween. So... I'm going to get those started. We got some spammers on there too. Mm. So don't ever click the, don't ever click the links, Chris. Yeah. They might infect your phone. Yeah. <laughs> I take it to the phone doctor. Yeah. <laughs> Have to get it shots. No. <laughs> but let's see. Okay, so uh, let me make sure. So he mentioned his name, so I guess it's okay. So he said, my name is Josh. I'm a member of the Chickasaw Nation. And since Halloween is coming up soon, which was a while ago, I want to tell you one of our legends, which surrounds a very real and very mysterious lake in our homeland. Much like your tribe, the Chickasaws were forced to move to Oklahoma many years ago. Prior to that, prior to that, our homeland was primarily in northern Mississippi or Alabama. Our biggest settlements were around were around the Tom Tom Bigby River. Mm. West of the West of the Tom Bigby River is a creek called Tibby Creek, which connects to the mysterious and ancient Tibby Lake. Mm. The Tibby Creek is a prehistoric stream and was once even larger than the Tombigi River. It is a small, now it's a small creek. There have been stories of strange things happening at the Tibby Lake for many years. Before the Trail of Tears, there's a well known Chickasaw witch who lived near the lake. Her name was uh, Annie McGee. She was single and lived alone. People said she would shapeshift into an owl or bear and would sometimes put curses on people. One day in 1840, she disappeared. No one knows for sure where she went, though some thought she moved to Oklahoma with the rest of the tribe. Others thought the lake took her. It would not be the first time you see Annie lived near the lake because it was a portal to the below place, which we call Land of the Witches. Even before Annie lived there, we passed down an ancient story a thousand years a thousand years old about the lake, and it goes like this: A Chickasaw family was moving, and they camped near a fallen tree one night. They had two children, a boy and a girl. In the morning, the husband and wife went out to search for game. When they returned, they were horrified to discover their campsite had sunk down into the earth, and Tibby Lake had appeared from thin air. Their children were nowhere to be found, but in the lake there were two great horned serpents swimming swimming together. The serpents were massive, terrifying, powerful creatures with flashing razor antlers sharper than any flint and with scales that changed color to all the colors of of the rainbow, depending on how the light hit them. Terrified, the terrified couple knew these serpents were their children. Something had transformed them. The couple fled and the lake was shunned by the tribe after that. Shunned until Annie moved in. The lake is a cursed place that never changes. It is one of the few untouched places from pre-contact Chickasaw tradition. The water is always placid and dead and it is full of gum trees that are hundreds of years old. From time to time, trespassers have seen whirlpools swarming the lake. There's no earthly explanation for this phenomenon, especially in the lake that is always still. 
not unless the horned serpents are still lurking in the depths. Chickasaw tradition says that a person can travel to the land of witches without dying by passing through a portal that goes through a particular nebula that we call the eye star. It is depicted in our art as a hand with the eye in it. Perhaps Tibby Lake is one such portal. It is said the lake has no bottom and no one knows how deep it is. It is privately owned by a gun club now and locked up tight. Maybe this is for the better. The horned serpents are not evil creatures. They are guarding something. They are not trying to keep us out of the lake. They are not trying to keep us out of the lake. They are trying to keep something in. Dang, when you was reading that story, I heard a little growl. That was I thought it was your uh, your stomach. No, my stomach. <laughs> I heard that too. I was like, dang. But anyway. <laughs> I thought that was your, uh, maybe it was your chair. I just heard like something like that. This was a growl. I don't know. It growled. Oh, God. <laughs> dang. But all I was going to say on that story, though, you know, those, you know, every tribe had stories about these kind of beings you know so again i know we we kind of covered those in under our water monster episode but yeah i'm always fascinated with those kind of stories you know those are very awesome yeah now i'm scared chris you sound like that uh uh-huh. kind of but i don't know i kind of swear it was like a you're clearing your throat or something like but that's it's kind of like how i heard how i heard it how did you hear it i heard it like might have been well yeah might have been her groaning i don't know why she's laying like that now hmm well now she's going back to sleep she done woke up i guess (laughs) whatever that was maybe she heard it too i don't know Yeah, I don't know. I thought it was your stomach, like not growling because you're, but but just like digesting. I guess I I should say. But I heard it too. Hmm. Dang, something something knocked back. Ah. <laughs> 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 Dang. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> Maybe it was your chair. Move your chair. No. I didn't move though. I didn't I don't think I moved, did I? I don't know. Well, that was weird. We'll just If ch- you if you heard it everybody, let us know. Cause I, I know I heard something, but I thought it was like you just your your digestion maybe. But I didn't think much of it because that's what I thought it was. And then I thought, well, maybe after you said that, no, then I was just, maybe it was your chair. And I can't remember if I moved or not. Maybe it was your phone. No. Hmm. Because you would hear the buzzing on the table. It sounded like. A growl. Yeah. Hmm. Can you mimic it? Uh, yeah, kind something of, like that. Yeah, but it had it. It kind of sounded like a cat or something. Like, y'all got a cat, don't y'all? We did. I don't know where it's at though. Hmm. Well. Anyway. Whoa. <laughs> We're done. Oh, wow. no, no. <laughs> I have to. I have to listen back. They can kind of scared to listen back now. <laughs> God might be saying your name. Dang. Yeah. I heard I heard it. I know what you're talking about, but yeah, that's pretty uh it's pretty scary, Chris. Thank you for scaring me today. <laughs> I don't know, maybe it was my imagination. I'll I'll listen back on it. Uh, what's your next? Well, see, I was. I just heard it again. But it was like 
fan those that were. That's why I keep thinking it's your stomach, your digestion. What did you have before here? Some bueno? Hello. Yeah. <laughs> this is your tummy. Yeah. Get that out of my face. Yeah. <laughs> Raise my shirt up and there's a face there. Yeah. God. See? That's what a phone sounds like. Mm. Was it that? Okay. Might have been the chair, though. I know this chair creaks a lot. After I'll, I'll listen back because I don't know if you moved. I was into the into the, into zone. But okay, so we have one here. I don't know if they want me to say their name or not, but they said listening to an episode. I heard a story about a man who worked regularly with an entity. One day, the entity came to tell the man that they couldn't work together anymore. The spirit explained that it was a jinn now because it converted to Islam and jinns are not permitted to speak and work with humans. So the entity just came to say goodbye. And this was from a Choctaw friend that converted to Islam told me that. Hmm. So what you know about jinns? I know there's several different versions of jinns. <coughs> they got... They have a whole different mythology on jinns. You know, jinns are basically spirits. <clears throat> they also have a, I guess they're like their Bible. What what do they call the Muslim Bible? Mm-hmm. The her, 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 I'm not even gonna attempt it. Her, I might offend somebody. Yeah, their their uh, Muslim Bible. They have a name for it, and it talks about those jinns, those spirits, and. There, there are some that are good. There are some that's bad. There's some that's mischievous. A lot like Native American stories. Um, they got some that'll trick you into doing things, you know, and sometimes they'll trick you into doing something which you're supposed to be doing, and sometimes they'll trick you into doing something bad. Then they got some that, you know, protect people, you know, and like I said, those gins, uh, Again, the gin, you know, everybody knows that genie in the bottle. You know, it's kind of mm-hmm. similar to that. You know, they just kind of cut it down short, you know. And, and so to make that word genie, you know, and <clears throat> they have those supernatural abilities to do all kinds of stuff. And, you know, I know like uh, you might see some of those ghost shows from overseas where, you know, they're calling upon those gins to help protect them from these evil spirits. So, <clears throat> you got all kinds of stuff like that, too. Dang. The gin. Might have done an episode on that. That would be a long one. Because, like I said, they got so many different gins out there. Mm-hmm. And um, there are some that... They're kind of like... Uh, Named, you know, like, like, you know, how you say it, like demonology, you know, they have different names for different ones. It's pretty crazy, though. Whoa. We'll think about it. Might be a two-parter or three. Uh, This person said, I don't know if I told you, told y'all this one or not, but there's a keen movie called The Unborn. It's a creepy movie, and it's based off the twin experiments that were done at Auschwitz. Uh, in the movie, there's this demon thing that seems to appear as a, as different things, but mostly a dog with its head upside down. Mm-hmm. Anyways, years ago, I went to see that at the movies with my son's dad. I know it wasn't that night, but sometime within a few days, I'd reckon, I had a strange thing happen. I woke up because I heard growling at the foot of the bed, I kind of sat up trying to look down there without actually having to get up to look. And all the cabinet bo- cabinet doors in the house were slamming open and shut. I nudged the old man telling him what's going on. He just kind of grumbled at me, looked around, and didn't get up. I was so scared. I threw myself back onto my pillow and shut my eyes. Uh, when I opened them, it was daytime and all the activity had stopped. I swear I was awake and all that... And all that wasn't a dream. I suppose it was a dream or a vision. 
I don't know, but I was awake. In an instant, I was awake, and in an instant, it had gone from night to day. I was freaking out and nudging the man. I was telling him what I saw, but not details of what I did in the dream. He was real quiet, and he said, Did you sit up to look over the edge of the bed? And I said, Yes. So then we both knew that we both had seen this dream, but the entity in the movie is a Dibbuk, D-Y-B-B-U-K. Dibbuk. Dibbuk. The entity in the movie is a Dibbuk, which is part of a pantheon of pantheon of angels and demons in Chabad, Chabad culture. Pretty much Orthodox Jews overall secure secular Jews don't believe in those entities. Hmm. Those Dybbuk boxes, you know, again, they're <clears throat> boxes that are basically keep evil spirits, you know, demonic spirits, you know, and they're able to kind of capture them in there. My understanding is there's only seven in the world. And of course, uh, they're in museums and different places like that. And I think there's like maybe two that are out in public that are still being, uh, I don't know, handed from home to home. You know, and people don't know that those things are evil until they get it and all kinds of th- bad things happen to them. Then they figure it out that that's the item that you need to get rid of. And then they gift it to somebody else. And Oh, man. So if anybody gives you a, a keen looking uh, pine box, little bitty one, you better just pass it on. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be trying to keep it. Put your eagle feathers in it. No. <laughs> Send it to us. Yeah. <laughs> be the only Christmas present that Unks gets this year. No. Well, you said you're lonely, Unks. Here you go. Yeah. <laughs> All right, um, <clears throat> this one is from Nick Williams, and I wanted to share this since it was close to Halloween. I went to get seen by the doctor this past week due to illness. As I was getting ready to leave after scheduling my next appointment, I started walking off when I heard a woman's voice saying, Hey, Nick, as if they were trying to stop me before leaving. I turned around and asked the lady, lady at the desk what she needed. She replied, I don't need anything. How can I help you? I said, I I said, didn't you just call my name? She said, no, I didn't. Well, uh, what was strange is there were three women standing there behind a closed office with just speaker with just the speaker hole in the front window to which none of them called for me or didn't hear the woman call my name as well. They were on, they were the only staff due to the clinic. They were the only staff due to the clinic, either leaving for lunch or attending this mandatory meeting in in another building. The time of day was daylight, and it's not the first episode I've ever had at this facility. What do you guys think? Is he at a clinic? Is that yeah. What it, yeah. Sometimes that's people's last visit sometimes, so you never know. You never, never know. Yeah, he just says he went to the doctor. Um, Let us know if it's like a... Hospital, or- hospital, I- IHS maybe, or because I know Pawnee IHS, the old one. There's a lot of stuff that happened in that one, mm-hmm. to where there's a lot of activity, day or night. But Claremore is like that too. Is it Claremore uh, IHS hospital? They got emergency room, and of course, people still have births there. You know, they give babies there, and I don't know if that's a proper word, but mm-hmm. uh, they also people go in there and have major surgery, and sometimes they don't make it, you know. Mm-hmm. So I know that I hear a lot of stories from Claremore IHS. Hmm. Yeah, I never been to that one. Mm. No, I'm scared. Dang. <laughs> I, I go over there once in a great while because they got good eye care and dental. And uh, they also have emergency dental over there, too. Mm-hmm. So that means if you middle of the night chomping on something and crack your tooth, that's the place to go. Oh, <clears throat> good to know. 
Mm-hmm. But yeah, Nick, let us know if that's a hospital or IHS and maybe, maybe like how long it's been active or how long it's been running, I guess. If it's the Nick Williams, I'm thinking it's probably Pahuska. Really? Yeah. But I don't know if it's the same guy or not. If that's you, Nick, let us know. Yeah. Is that an old one, too? That honey? The, the one in Pahuska? I really don't know. I know it's been around for a while. I know at least 20 years. It looks kind of like a new building, though, so I don't know. Mm. I, I don't know. I know they, they had to have a hospital there somewhere. Mm-hmm. You know, because Pahuska is a pretty good-sized little community. Okay. And then this one is anonymous. See that? Did you hear that? That's what I heard. No, it's like, dang, I might be possessed. <laughs> oh. <laughs> dang, pointing at, pointing at me even. So you, unks, <laughs> yes, you got no. <clears throat> I didn't hear it though, but I, I trust you <laughs> when you say it. So, might have been me. Might have been my. I don't know. <laughs> I'm waiting on it. It seems like it does it every time I start talking. Maybe it's you then. Nope. No. It's you. Nope. You you possess, God. No. Nope. The thing. That's you. Dang. <laughs> Can't trust each other. <laughs> start keeping that eye on you like that. I'm looking at the camera. But I got one eye over here. <laughs> got that iguana eye. Still got looking that, at you. That crazy eye. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so I went to the Ripley's Museum on my way back from a vacation. I went on... I went to the Ripley's Museum on my way back from a vacation I went on with my ex-girlfriend. At the time, still together. We went through looking at the exhibits at one that had a plaque up for a woman who died in the house that they turned into the museum. We walked by and they had a mannequin set up with mirrors around the little exhibit to make it look like a ghost in the middle of the exhibit. Well, my girlfriend started to cry and said she is so sad. She doesn't want to be an exhibit. She's crying saying don't laugh at me. <clears throat> well, I tried to comfort my girlfriend and we kept going through the museum. When we came to a room full of African masks and cursing posts, it had weapons from African tribes and kings. As we were going through, I suddenly felt surrounded and felt anger all around me. I heard in my head a bunch of voices saying, We were kings and gods. We're proud soldiers. We're not to be a mockery. We're not a joke or an exhibit for people to gawk at. I then felt so much rage engulfing in me and then, and it terrified me but also made me sad. I had to sit in the next room and catch my breath, which finished the walk. Catch my breath. We finished the walk through and I broke down at the car from all the emotions I picked up in there. The spirits there are so angry and they're put on display and so many people think they're funny. So many spirits attached to this weapon. So many spirits attach to these weapons and masks. They want to go back to Africa where they're from, where they're worshipped and honored. They really wanted me to spread that message. These exhibits are to be honored in their correct way. I believe that, you know. Again, you know, these war war tools, that's basically what you're talking about. They've taken lives. Mm -hmm. You know, these ancient people, whether they're Africans, whether they're Asians, whatever, you know, they had rituals before they went to war, before they went to battles. You hear... You even see movies today about samurais and the things that they do before they go into battle. You know, that was all rituals. It was all <clears throat> talking to that sword or to that spear or to that bow, you know, or even those knives. You know, they're 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 bringing them to life, the, the spirit, and using those. And so, you know, again, you know, they put things on those items. You know, especially, you know, these more ancient uh, objects, you know, I, I really str- 
strongly believe that there are things on there. You know, I go to a lot of museums and I see stuff like that. And sometimes, to be honest, you know, sometimes I get those those vibes off some of those things. So I, I definitely agree with that. Yeah, very true. I do too. And I think that's it for catching up on them. Is that all of them? Yeah. I've got one that I would like for you to read uh, before we go into our topic. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and this one's from, uh, let me see. <clears throat> Tara Fudge Roberts from OKC. I think that's where she's from. And uh, she's a real awesome person. She works in education. She's uh, Comanche Creek. And uh, she's just an all-around keen person. But I'm going to let Russell read her story. She might have you guys spooked. Word of warning. You might get your face twisted on this one. Okay, so there's a time where sometimes you just have to accept that evil lives in the house with you. Sometimes it might be just the people who are in your home. Sometimes it is the home itself. There is a time where unexplainable things have happened on the daily. The more I cleansed and prayed, the more evil seems to manifest itself in my home. I do believe about. I do believe that the father and daughter had something dark and evil attached to them. They both had something scary. Scary about them when they were angry. Now this could be just them having no accountability for their actions, but I just truly believe evil was just burning in them. When I went and burned my herbs, incense, in the, incense and candles, the energy was calm but very dark and very heavy. But when I would do a ritual or a cleansing... Strange things, strange things would happen and take place. Most of them happened with the little girl. The girl would lash out and scream at me and throw things. At first, I chalked it up to her just acting out because she was an undisciplined child. I moved past that. She would get so angry, she would stand on my rug and scream a hollow, deep scream and soil herself. Wow. The blank stares were the most intense and the scariest for me. It is just like a dark void of all humanity. She like she was just a statue. She was almost in a non-human state. <clears throat> she would scream and cry and grab at the door frame not to come in the house after I would seat her or sage the home. She would physically lash out and try to hurt me. There are police reports of neighbors calling the cops reporting screaming coming from the home. They would come in and find nothing wrong. This went for a year until one night I saw a tall, dark figure standing directly where she would soil herself. He was over, he was tall, over seven feet tall. A wide, flat brimmed hat with red eyes. I was in my office. It has two doors. He was blocking one, he was blocking one entrance and she was again blank staring at the other entrance. I called out a prayer and grabbed my medicine bag. The black, shadow was gone from the room but not from the area you could feel the energy from the area and you could feel the energy i knew something was wrong the dogs outside were howling like they were in pain the house was cold and i could hear groans that night i did not sleep i called my mother on the phone and had her stay on the phone with me for hours until my sister came over to help me Darkness grew in the home and the violence got worse. You clearly see the blankness in her eyes and the pictures I had of her and the physical fear you can tell it took from me. I was a scared and empty shell of a woman. I truly be, I truly believe they sucked all goodness and sanity from me, not to mention the attacks that resulted in physical harm. Sometimes you just can't love the evil out of someone. <clears throat> wow. Mano for that story. So was that, um, did they call him Top Hat Man? Yeah. I, you know, again, you know, you'll hear thousands and thousands of stories like that. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, she kind of nailed it right on the head. Sometimes you can't love that evil out of a person Mm -hmm. or a place. And 
you know, that's where I kind of talk about, you know, sometimes these entities, they don't go away. You know, you can use everything you possibly can, but sometimes they fight back. They don't want to leave or they don't want to go. You know, maybe it's their dwellings. They feel like, you know, a lot of people, they think, oh, I'll go in there and I'll burn cedar and I'll do this and I'll do that and I'll run it out. Yeah, it might be gone for a little bit, but it'll come back, you know. So, again, you know, there's <clears throat> that's a prime example, exactly what I mean when I say that. You know, be careful what you go around getting into because sometimes these things aren't going to want to leave. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so now <clears throat> we'll move into what we wanted to talk about. And what did we say, Chris? This episode, we actually wanted to talk about. <clears throat> I know it was kind of confusing for a lot of people, but I know some got it. We wanted to talk about entities that dealt with children, you know, either looked like children or pretended like children or you saw children, you know. And, One of these, for example, you know, you hear from the Nevada area, they call them water babies. You know, the uh, story behind these, the, uh, I will say the non-native story, which you hear more of this than you actually hear of the actual native story about these. They always say uh, around that. I guess they call it Pyramid Lake. Is that correct? I think so. Pyramid Lake in Nevada. You know, it's a huge lake and people are always end up missing. You know, they'll go out on the waters, you know, and they'll disappear. And, you know, the local tribe people, you know, they'll, they'll tell them those Paiutes and Shoshones and Utes. They'll tell them that those water babies got a hold of them. You know, and and the mythology behind that is that they used to say it was old, um, I want to say Paiutes, that would uh, supposedly during, you know, wintertime, they'd have a baby that maybe would be premature or uh, uh, deformed or, you know, something was wrong with them, they'd throw them in the lake. That's the non-native version of it, you know, and they'd say, oh... <clears throat> the uh, babies that were thrown in there, they seek revenge on people and they take them. But <clears throat> the true story, you know, from these tribes that are from in that area, you know, they'll tell you that <clears throat> a long time ago, you know, uh, they used to say, you know, there used to be things that roamed those waters. And they mainly talk about rivers, you know, back way back then, you know, in olden times, you know, you had to do all your laundry and your dishes in the river or lake. And sometimes those those uh, moms, they would have to lay those baby down, you know, while they're doing the laundry or <clears throat> or uh, the dishes or, you know, cleaning something. <clears throat> and sometimes they would put their baby on the shore. And uh, before you know it, you know, they either lose track of time or, or what, and that baby's gone. You know, something, you know, is taking them. They always say it's those spirits from the water that would take those babies and put them into the water and and take off with them. You know, the <clears throat> they believe that there was a woman or the spirit of that lake is a female and she would crave those babies. You know, because she wanted a baby, you know, and that kind of, that's kind of where that comes from. They used to say, you know, if you're out and about doing your chores by the water, make sure you go with other people that can, that can help you watch those children, you know. And that's kind of the story, the true story behind that, you know. It wasn't, oh, they said, oh, that kid, he's no good, throw him in the water, you know. It wasn't like that, you know. They said, you know, back then in the days when they had to work, they didn't have no laundromat back then, you know, and they they had to clean everything by that water. And sometimes they would have to, you know, set that baby aside. <clears throat> and, you know, for whatever reason or whatever got them, that, that baby would be gone forever, you know. So <clears throat> they would always say it was, you know, a spirit. But, you know, now you're talking about, 
<clears throat> the things that I guess what you would say haunt those waters, you know, the lakes and mainly mainly you'll hear this about the rivers. <clears throat> and the the thing about this it wasn't just the Paiutes and the Shoshones or Utes, you know, a lot of tribes that were around water uh, they would tell these kind of stories. Same, same way with uh, Florida Seminoles and Creeks, you know. <clears throat> they would say, you know, watch your kids around the water, you know, because, again, every tribe had, you know, some sort of water monsters, water being, water spirit that would come and take people. You know, and that to me, that kind of falls all in the same category as these water babies, but... <clears throat> Nowadays, you'll hear a lot of stories, you know, uh, this one story that I'm getting ready to tell <clears throat> is kind of a, a current story, you know, uh, they uh, were in Nevada at a lake, and, uh, you know, uh, they were camping, they were going to spend the whole week there, it was during summertime, you know, and this little family had, uh, it, they were a young couple, and uh, they were they were uh, camping with other couples. I guess there was you know uh, about four or five different couples there at this thing. And anyway, make a long story short, you know they got there and they set up camp. And this was a kind of the first night that they were there. And uh, anyway, they were getting ready to you know build a fire and cook supper, you know, and and stuff. So. They were getting arranged, everything, but they found out, you know, they left something out that they needed to cook with. And, of course, they also wanted uh, drink beverages, you know, adult drink beverages. And so they didn't have that either. So a group of them said, well, we're going to town and get this. But, you know, town was far away from their campsite. So I just uh, like two or three of them decided to stay and... <clears throat> finish feeding the fire, getting it ready, getting more wood, you know, and uh, getting ready, you know, get finishing the, the camp. So they st stayed, and the rest of everybody else, they went into town to, to the store to get all the supplies that they needed for supper, you know. And anyway, those three individuals were by the water, and they were finishing putting up all the tents and getting out the sleeping bags, and they began to hear a cry in the dark and it was on the water and it sounded like a little kid and they all three heard it and uh you know they were saying man maybe it's it's a kid drowning or something we need to go out there so these three guys they got in their uh boat or their what their i don't know what you call their raft or wherever they were gonna go fishing in I guess they call them pontoons, is that right? Mm -hmm. uh, they're pontoons. Uh, they start going out there, rowing, you know, looking around. One of them had like a spotlight on the water. And sure enough, he looked, and he thought he saw a kid in the, in the water. And he hollered at him and said, there he is, you know, let's, you know, let's go over that direction. And so anyway, they began to row in that direction, and, he was trying to keep that light on there. But, you know, sometimes, you know, it begins to, uh, how you say, jiggle mm -hmm. or shake. And uh, he lost track of where that kid was, you know. And he started uh, kind of roaming with that light across that water. And he thought he saw something in the water. He thought it was maybe that kid. He was starting to sink. So he dropped the light and he jumped in the water. And one of the, the other guys was right behind him, jumped in the water too. And they were both <clears throat> down there trying to look and find this kid. But they never did. And so, anyway, they came up and, you know, they started shining the light kind of all in that area. And uh, there, I guess there was, uh, someone showed up from their crew back to camp. They saw the car lights hit that camp area so they begin to holler at them and say you know call you know call someone get help there's a kid in here i think he's drowning you know whatever and i guess they called the local authorities and 
I guess the, I guess there was a, I guess forest ranger and a couple other game rangers that showed up. And, you know, they started to uh, search that water for this individual, this kid. Anyway, to make a long story short, you know, next day, you know, they were still searching. They never found anything, never found anybody. But one of the locals told them, said, you know, I think you encountered what we call up here a water baby. It's a childlike spirit. And you don't want to follow those things. You don't want to be on the water when the sun goes down. And sometimes they'll draw you out to drown you. <laughs> I was going to ask today to lure you. Because <coughs> I've heard, so I heard of water, water babies that I... I and I never even heard, I didn't know what they were talking about. And, but this one guy, I don't know if he's messing with everybody. He said there's another form of them where they're like a fish. Mm-hmm. Is that true? Yeah. Okay. Cause I, I didn't know like whether, I didn't know if he's just trying to scare us or what, but we were just kind of telling things about where we're from and kind of the scary things. And he's from, um, he was from up north and, he was at, he was like, you guys ever heard of water babies? And I said, no. And he said, and I asked him like, what is that? He just said like, uh, you know, sometimes they cry around lakes and they might want to lure you in. And he said like, we're just told not to go find them, I guess. And then he said they could be a kid or sometimes they could sound like a kid, but they're really like, they take a form of a fish or something like a, I guess like a water being, I guess. And they would. Take you, take you, in, take you wonder. I guess if you go looking for them, that's correct. Uh, there's another story of them. <clears throat> Again, these kind of stories come from the Nevada area. <clears throat> this one, and um, anyway, kind of to make a long story short, basically, it was a a lady. Uh, she was one of their their tribe. You know, one of those Paiutes. And uh, I guess to make a long story short, she fell in love with this, uh, mm, I don't know what you'd call it, uh, white guy, you know, and she was really in love with him, but, you know, her people just didn't think that was, you know, proper, you know, and they thought, well, you know, we can't have you going over there and, you know, doing those kind of things, you know, these people are are here to punish us and, you know, do all this and that. And, you know, we don't really think too highly of them. And, you know, so anyway, she was, you know, wanting to do what she wants to do and make a long story short, you know, she was caught courting in him, you know, uh, being with him, I guess you might say. And uh, anyway, she also knew uh, certain medicines and certain things and, Anyway, uh, basically, uh, they punished her, and, and uh, any time, you know, in, in, in this situation, you know, uh, she was defiant, and uh, to make a long story short, you know, uh, they put something on her, and it basically, uh, how you say, it took her out, it killed her. But before she died, you know, to seek revenge, she put a curse, you know. And so uh, they say that, you know, she comes back in that kind of like a mermaid type entity. Mm. But she can shape shift because she's not alive and she's not truly dead. And so she has that ability to kind of shape shift into other beings you know other animals she might come to you as a beautiful woman she might come to you as a child she might come to you as an infant but she just kind of draws people out into the water and again drowns them you know and they always say she goes after those fishermen Mm -hmm. at a certain time of the year which i'm assuming it's during you know fish season and again she can transform herself into something that entices them like that keen fish i guess whatever fish that those guys fish for in that area and somehow 
you'll hear stories about that like that at that pyramid lake you know again you know you got a lot of fishermen that end up just disappearing they never find their bodies you can look that up you know there's a lot of people all every year that go fishing and you never find them again really so what i'm gonna look that up chris well, I looked up Pyramid Lake to make sure that was the one we were talking about. And yeah, Pyramid Lake in Nevada. Yeah. They, I, if I remember correctly, it's a pretty good sized lake and it's pretty deep, I think. Yeah, there's a lot of missing people. Yeah. It says body of missing man found. Two missing boaters found. Uh... Tribe and town seeks missing man. Pyramid Lake. Two, golly. Yeah, there's... This list goes on and on. It's a... You know, they say there's a lot of them end up missing every year and only just a handful get found. Mm -hmm. And again, you know, the local tribe always claims it's those uh, water babies. Again, they trick you into getting into the water, but... Those people will tell you, and I've been there, they'll tell you, don't mess around that water at night. Mm -hmm. Don't go swimming in that water. Don't go fishing in that water. Don't even look at that water because there'll be something there that draws you into the water. And once it gets you, it gets you. And they call it those water. They have an Indian name for it, but I'm just going to call it water, baby. Mm -hmm. Did you feel anything when you went there? Actually, I did. I mean, it just has kind of a... During the t- daytime, I will say it still has kind of a eerie, I don't know, it just feels weird like something's watching you. Mm-hmm. But when that sun goes down, I mean, it, it's almost like it, like a switch comes on. I mean, you know there's something in that dark. I mean, it's just like that. I mean, it, there's no shadow of a doubt in my mind. I knew there was something out there. And whether it's, real or not real i didn't want to find out on that you know um again around that um around that lake um it's been a while since i've been out there um you will just see some strange things out there i'll just say that i mean when i was out there i was out there with the crew and um we were there for work and uh anyway make a long story short you would see shadows by the water or on the water and sometimes i i I thought maybe i was just seeing things but you know after visiting with a lot of those uh tribes in that area i strongly believe that I, i did see some spirits you know out there so whether it was those water babies or the people that end up missing because again every year you got a lot of people gone mm-hmm. <clears throat> you're there at night too mm-hmm. how long did you stay there at night we were there for three three days uh-huh and um yeah i know uh like I said, when that night fell, <clears throat> that was crazy. I'll just say that. So yeah, there's certain places you go to, and I don't know. This was one of them that give you those creepy vibes. You know, like I say, even during the t- daytime, <clears throat> it just to me it just didn't feel right. I mean, it just felt like something was. It's a beautiful place, a very mm-hmm. pretty place. I mean, when you go there, it's uh, how you say it. Pic- you, you'll want to take pictures, you know, and stuff. But mm-hmm. it just has that funny vibe to it. And uh, I encourage anybody that's in that area. You know, I know you've, you guys got any stories? Send them up. We'd mm-hmm. like to hear them. <coughs> they have they told you about their serpent too? They have. Yes, yes, yeah. yeah. They got water monster in there too. So is that the same lake too? It's a they got that serpent in there. <clears throat> There's several places that they have water monsters in, mm-hmm. but that that's they got a water monster in there too. So 
This story that I'm getting ready to tell, tell <clears throat> it's at a different location. This one's by a river, but it's still in Nevada. And uh, again, this one's uh, by a river. And uh, anyway, again, you know, these people were going to go there to raft and fish and, you know, have a good time and stuff. And <clears throat> again, uh, this group of young guys, there were about five of them. And uh, anyway, they uh, set up camp and <clears throat> they had a good good uh cookout you know they cooked hamburgers and hot dogs they ate good telling stories and it was uh getting late so they all lay down you know got in their little tents and started to go go to sleep anyway uh they said uh middle of the night one of those guys uh said a little kid come and tapped his foot he woke up and he saw this little boy standing at the end of his tent and uh, asking him, you know, if he knew where he was at. And, of course, you know, that young man, you know, said, hold up. So he got up and he he stepped out of his tent and, and uh, he said, are you lost? And that little boy, you know kind of told him he said I think so he said I'm looking for my family and uh so uh he said well hold on he said let me get you know my my friends and maybe we can help you find your family so he went and woke woke those other guys up and that little boy he wasn't stand by the fire he stood on the outer part of the fire you know Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and uh anyway uh he said uh you know he got everybody else up and <clears throat> um tom said that little boy is saying he's looking for his family so he must have got up used the restroom got turned around so they're probably pretty close so let's go help him find his family and uh anyway make a long story short they all got up, got their flashlights, and put their shoes on, and anyway, uh, that little boy started to walk, and those guys said, well, you know, what's your, what's your family's name, you know, what's your name, so we can holler out, maybe your folks will hear us, and he never responded, he just, he started walking, so those guys started to follow him. Anyway, that little boy goes to that river, you know, and he uh, he tells them that I think they're on the other side of the water, on the other side of the water. And he said, come follow me, come follow me. And that little boy gets into the water and starts to swim across. And now, again, this is, you know, at nighttime. And they're trying to keep that flashlight on that kid while he's going across this this very powerful water. And they see him swimming. And he gets to the other side. And he doesn't get out of the water. And they say he kind of goes under. And those other guys kind of panic. And... Anyway, they're they're thinking about jumping in, but that water is very um I don't know what do you call it? Very uh how do you say forceful. It's a strong current, you know, they could see it, you know, it's uh <clears throat> and that one guy one of his friends said, Don't go across that water. He said, One we'll we'll, we'll drown. They said, Well that little boy got in there and made it across somehow. And they said, well, we're just going to go back and get some help, you know, call, you know, call the appropriate authorities to come and help him. Because there's a, <clears throat> a wildlife refuge just a little ways from our camp. So let's just call those guys and they'll come out. And sure enough, they called them and <clears throat> that park ranger or that that wildlife guy was, you know, part uh, 
I think he was a uh, Zuni or something. Anyway, make a long story short, that guy was telling him, said, you know, here we got things that'll make you go into that water and they'll make you drown. And said, that's probably what that is. But they did look. They did look for that little boy. Mm-hmm. Never found. Never found that kid. So, again, that park ranger told him, said, you know, we've got things around here. And, you know, of course, he had a name for it. But, again, I'm just going to call it, you know, a water baby entity. So they can do that, too? They can come out and find you? Lower you into the water. <clears throat> it's pretty scary. That's yeah. terrifying. I wonder how far they say how far they're away from the water. No, he didn't. Must have been some ways up there, like following. That kid was like, "Follow me, follow me." Yeah, come on, yeah. right over here. I know it. That's pretty scary, man. And to see him jump in that, he was. They call it like a raging water, uh-huh. and you know it was very powerful, and they were. Shocked one, that little boy just jumped in there and supposedly he made it to the other side, but he never got out of the water. Mm -hmm. And he was calling them to come in. Man. They said what he looked like? Just like a little kid? Yeah, just a little kid in shorts. Didn't look. And no shirt, no shoes. Didn't look any different? Mm Mm-mm. Wow. It's pretty scary, Chris. No, well, that's good to know, though, just to not go with them. But, I mean, like, you want to because it's a kid. Like, like they may need help, right? Yeah, yeah. So then your instincts are like, I got to help them. But, yeah, after seeing, after I would see that, I'd be like, that's not possible, right? Like, a little yeah. kid cannot. <laughs> yeah, he just jumped in there and went, went across. But, <laughs> yeah, Chris, that's pretty scary. But I have a voice message, but these are, this is a personal experience with him about water babies. Hold on. James Romero of the okay. Tomohama Tanoma and the Tuatai, the Big Pine Paiute and Tos Pueblo from Paiahunaru. Uh, so one of my stories growing up was, uh, I remember hearing the sounds of a baby by the rivers uh, and we were told not to go by them at nighttime. Because, you know, they said a lot of times that was those spirits or those beings that were there. So we were told to not mess with those. And uh, interesting enough, you know, when you hear like beavers and things like that, water creatures that live amongst those areas, you know, they do make baby sounds. And it kind of ties in. But it's pretty obvious when you hear something that's not like an animal, that's something that has a presence. It has a deeper feeling to it. Uh, So, you know you do have those alarms going off internally that tell you that it is something but i remember hearing those sounds growing up too in certain places at night continuing this story that baby chased them all the way down this dirt road okay so before that one I just played, there was a voice message on here, and it's not playing. And then there's one right after that one I just played. That one's not playing. So let's see if this we can kind of connect them because those two aren't playing, and I don't know if the rest of these will play. They played before, but now they're not trying to play. So let's see what happens so they weren't able to drive fast but they drove as fast as they could and it kept getting closer and closer as they could see from that uh, rear light of the vehicle and as they were going they were screaming and looking in the back and they're saying it's catching up it's catching up and you know they were uh were freaking out and the driver would just keep on going and then finally they got to the close to where the road was where it intersected with a paved road into town and as they got to that road, you know, they caught that thing, got right up to them, and they heard a bang, a big old bang hit the back of their car. And so they screamed, and everybody was just freaking out. And then they pulled into town, and it went away. And then they stopped at the gas station, and they looked, and they said they found a little bump on the back of their car from something catching up and jumping up on them. 
Mm. So that's one of the stories I heard from some of our young people in the 80s. St. Romero of the Tobu Hamatanoma and the Tuatai people from Payahunaru again. Mm. And again, another personal one. So when I was a little rebellious little punk from uh, the 90s when I was in high school, you know, I went out and hung out with the, the wrong crowd and all that, did all that stuff. But one time we were out by the rivers and uh, they were having like a little, little spot where everybody was gathering and doing what the bad kids were doing at the time, you know. And so I wanted to go home, so I walked home. And as I was walking, you know, I started uh, going along that canal that I told you about earlier. And you know, there's some water. And again, I did hear like splashing, like following me along the road as I was walking. And it kept on splashing, like little splash. And it gets splashes more and more. And then it just started getting like really heavy when I was getting kind of where the bridge was that crossed the, the canal. And I looked down and sure enough, there was something down there kind of like um, watching me continuation of my story and so I began running and then again you know you hear that splash like you would take off and jump in the water and it would follow me as I was running along the canal at nighttime and it was dark and so you know it really freaked me out but you know when something's following you like that along the waterways you know and the road is like the only way because there's like a barbed wire fence on the other side there's like really nowhere else to go aside from jumping in the water and running across it to the other side which I had to do eventually but you know that kind of straightened me out a little bit because i was like you know i'm reacting like that these things are starting to chase me around now so i better cut it out straighten up now so from there as a young person i realized to not mess around with those things and walk in a good way so thank you oh Pisha. Mado for that <clears throat> thank you sage for that um two of your voice messages would not play and there you go. We got some activity happening because they played before and now they just won't, they won't play. I hit play and they just, nothing happens. Mm. Man. Well, that was a good story though. What well, we were able to hear from it. It was pretty good. Oh, and then he sent me a message saying, well, I told him, thank you for the the stories. Uh, we're going to share them when we record and looking forward to more. And just I said, just send in whatever you have. It doesn't have to be water babies, just anything else, too. So whenever, whenever. And he said, uh, thank you. I'm excited to listen to this show when it comes out. Many blessings and thank you for what y'all are doing. I'll be shouting you out. I'll be shouting all of you out at L.A. Skins Fest Film Festival today. Oh, uh, no. Down here in Hollywood, California. So, L.A. Skins Fest. I forget that's going on. Invite us out next time. Yep. We'll, we'll scare everybody. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I know, I know uh, most of the stories we told tonight uh, on this episode was was negative but you know i always say you know <clears throat> a lot of these beans they're not always bad you know sometimes they're good too and you know another thing that you know we didn't really get to go over was that you know to mo uh, to most of these people that live in these areas and that still have these stories you know <clears throat> they don't always look at them as bad too you know uh, there are some water baby stories out there that you know talk about how uh for example this story it was just kind of short she sent in a message that you know they live by a river and every now and then they'll hear that baby crying in the water by the river and you know her grandma would always tell her saying we're going ready to hear someone pass away and sure enough in the you know next couple of days you know they get word that someone passes away so you know they they look at them as you know how you say uh uh telling you that death is coming you know for someone so you know good they're 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 uh what do you call it notifiers i guess messengers messengers <clears throat> there you go I was looking for that word so you know they're they're death messengers too you know and this story was also kind of short you know um uh 
<clears throat> there was a, a o- older couple. They were out uh, uh, at a at a lake, and uh, <clears throat> they took their boat out. You know, and I guess they had been partying. You know, pretty good. You know, they're older. They're tired. This was their first kind of vacation. You know. You know, they they both work many hours, put a lot of kids through college and, you know, you know, did did their parent duties and, you know, was taking care of grandkids and stuff and they never got a chance to get away. Well, they got a chance to get away to this lake. So, you know, they, they rented this uh, boat and uh, anyway, they went out in the middle of that boat to fish and, you know, kind of put their hair down as you might say you know they was having a good time and then it got late got dark anyway uh uh, nobody else else was on the lake you know when the sun went down it just got pitch black and there was no moon out that night and they tried to start that boat up and that boat you know wouldn't turn over wouldn't turn over and anyway they were stuck out there, and the temperature dropped, you know, and it got super cold quick, and uh, they didn't know how long they were going to be out there, plus uh, her husband, you know, takes heart medication certain time of the, you know, you got to take it certain time of the night and, or day, you know, whenever you, you have to take it, and he had left it out on shore. And so, without that medication, you know, she knew he was going to have some serious problems. So, she began to panic. And, uh, anyway, uh, they were sitting there trying to think of what to do. You know, they were looking around that boat to see if there was, like, maybe a flare gun or something that they could, you know, shoot up, you know, to let people know that they're out there. And, uh. Anyway, to make a long story short, they just couldn't find anything. They didn't know how to get that boat back to shore. Uh, there was no, uh, uh, what do you call it, CB or no radio on that boat. And she was, you know, really panicking. And Out of the dark, they began to hear a baby cry. And this was on the water. This wasn't on land. And they begin to hear this baby keep crying and crying. And it sounded like it kept getting closer and closer. And uh, they both were trying to figure out what it was. You know, what kind of animal on the water sounds like a baby crying. They couldn't figure it out. You know, and pretty soon uh, they saw lights way in the distance. Uh, like flashlights they begin to you know shake and you know do that you know and uh pretty soon uh they uh seen uh or heard someone start to holler you know and then they noticed you know it looked like you know someone was coming because there were some lights that were starting to move towards them anyway to make a long story short it was a rescue crew they came out because they heard a baby crying and they came out to see if, you know, somebody was out there, you know, or their kid was stuck out there. Mm-hmm. And, uh, anyway, uh, if it wasn't for that, they didn't know how long, you know, they would be out on that, that boat. But, you know, because those people on shore also heard that baby crying, they came out to them <clears throat> and they, they believe, you know, that it was one of those water babies helping them out. So, again, I don't know, you know, I don't know, you know, I'm not here to debate whether they're good or evil entities. I'm just telling you what stories were given to me. Madhu. Would the same, remember, you know how we say, like, <clears throat> there's no time or place and they could be anywhere. Can they be anywhere? Or do you think they would just reside in that area? I would say probably around water, you know, because that's kind of yeah. where all these stories, you know, resonate at. And I mean, yeah, like I meant like anywhere, like with water, 
Like, yeah. You think they would? I think as long as you have that that element there, as long as you have that element of water, you know, they're that spirit. That's what connects them. That's what gives them the power. You know, that spirit is what of that water. Even if it was a glass of water, I think, you know, somewhere, somehow you could unlock it if you wanted to. But, you know, that's going into medicine type stuff. Mm -hmm. So I'll just go that far. Like I was like I was saying, you know, a a lot of tribes, you know, had those stories. They didn't call they didn't all call them water babies. They all had a native name for them. Mm -hmm. And like I said, creeks and Seminoles. Of course, we live by the water a lot. So we had stories like that, too. Mm -hmm. So. And if you want to get technical, even people across the waters, you know, in Europe, in Asia, all over the place, <clears throat> they had stories of similar entities around water mm-hmm. that used that baby form. So, all over, huh? Yep. This is also a, a <clears throat> water baby type story. Um, anyway, um, uh, they live uh, again, you know, on a, a lake. Uh, I want to call it. I want to say something like. See if you can look up lakes in Canada. It's like Onion Lake. I think it's Onion Lake. In Saskatchewan. Yeah, there you go. Uh, this one, yeah, this is an Onion Lake. Um, these uh, people live by that lake onion lake and anyway make a long story short you know uh <clears throat> what was told to me was that you know every now and then you know on that lake you will hear babies cry you know and sometimes you know again these people sometimes they'll say it's either someone getting ready to pass or you know something uh major is going to happen to that Indian community. You know, every time somebody hears that baby cry. Anyway, to make a long story short, you know, this, uh, this particular week, uh, they begin to hear this baby cry. Everybody in that community would hear it. And, you know, they were all kind of talking amongst themselves, you know, <clears throat> so it sounds like someone might pass away, might be a leader, because everybody's starting to hear it. Anyway, uh, they begin to, you know, kind of, I don't know, rumor is, you know, someone's so sick, you know, and they start already burying this individual, you know, almost, you know, families start coming in, you know, they say, this guy's been bad way for a little bit, and you know, everybody's starting to hear that baby, so I think it's him. You know, so they done pointed him, pointed him out like nephew did earlier. Go, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, anyway, uh, you know they they done named him. You know, and people start coming in, his family start coming in. They start getting their uh, giveaways ready for him. You know, making his moccasins. You know, and making him and uh, don't getting his outfit ready you know to send him off in that good way you know and <clears throat> anyway make a long story short you know uh, uh this individual not only did he not pass away but uh my understanding that you know he had been uh uh what do you call it i forget what they call it when you like to sleep for a long time what they call that is it a coma or oh yeah a com is it a coma or a coma 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 he was in a he was in that word you know and uh he was on breathing machines and stuff like that so you know again that community thought you know he was goner but you know uh he uh not only didn't die but he got off those breathing machines and he woke up and you know when he woke up you know he was talking about how <clears throat> i guess they had like a prayer service for him you know uh, 
couple weeks before that. And uh, he said he could hear everybody, you know, in that prayer service. And he remembered those things. And he remembered people saying, you know, certain things, you know. And, and uh, <clears throat> he said that, you know, while he was in that coma, uh, it was like he was standing outside his body on you know, around his relatives, you know, he could, he, he knew everything everybody was saying. <clears throat> and, uh, he stayed in that, in that kind of, I don't know, you call it realm. And he began to walk around that room and there was an individual in that room that, uh, he saw and, uh, he, that person visited with him and told him, said, you know, Basically, it wasn't his time to go, that it's time for him to wake up. You know, he's he he's going to wake up now. And uh, these are certain things that he needs to do. Anyway, to make a long story short, you know, like I said, he, he got off the breathing machine. He even woke up. And he told everybody this story. And, you know, again, you know, to me, it's like that water baby entity didn't wasn't a death omen but it was telling them you know something magnificent was going to happen instead of him dying he got better you know and his story was very moving for him you know and, and uh anyway that was a life-changing experience for him and uh not to <clears throat> i don't know how you say you know, he lived a bad life beforehand. And now, you know, because of his experience, he's he's changed his ways and doing good. So again, you know, you know, I don't know whether you want to consider that a water baby story or what, but I mean still it was an omen that everybody was experiencing and something positive came out of it. Mm -hmm. Do you know anything about the Arkansas River? Has there been, like, anything around there? I know it's a big river around, but I asked because I just remembered this when I was, like, 13, maybe. Me and my buddy went with his dad. He took us fishing. So he drove us out, and I didn't know which river it was. I was just a kid, but it's the Arkansas River. And we were there all day just fishing, and we spent the night there. And in a tent and we were all three in this tent and it was dark. Like it's super dark, nothing out there. And I'm like pretty scared. <laughs> like I'm, I was terrified and I, I don't even know what time it was. I don't know, but there is like, I heard this baby crying mm. and it kept me awake. And I, I swear it got closer and closer and I had nudged my buddy. I said, hey, man. Uh, oh, I was whispering. I said, hey, uh, there's a baby crying. And it, it it didn't cry when I nudged him. And we sat there. And he's about to fall back asleep. He's like, he's, I don't hear nothing. And he says, probably nothing. And then he, right when he's about to go to sleep, he heard it. And I said, and he said, oh, I, I hear it now. And it's kind of like getting near us. And it was this baby crying. And he said, uh, I said, man, what do you think that is? And he said, he said, well, he's like, I don't know. He's like, I've heard that Panthers do that. Mm. Panthers make like a baby, a baby noise and they can sound like they're crying to lure you. And he said, but if it's not that, I don't know. And then, so, but we were, we were by that river, like body of water. So it makes me wonder, like, was it a water baby? Like. <laughs> <laughs> it it could be because you know, like I said, that's just that's just a water spirit. Yeah, you know, that's just another form. You know, just those guys in Nevada, they called them water babies. Other mm -hmm. tribes had different names for them, mm -hmm. and so it could be you know, because that Arkansas River, you know, the Missouris, the Missouri tribe, you know, uh, yeah, all these tribes that lived up and down that 
uh, Arkansas River, you know, they all had these kind of stories and they all had names for them. Mm-hmm. So to me, it, it, it only makes sense. Only only thing I know about the Arkansas River right here in the Tulsa, Oklahoma area was that's where you had a lot of those Cherokees and Osages really fight it out, you know, old, old style. Mm-hmm. And so anyway, you know, I know there was a lot of skirmishes on that Arkansas River, so. Anyway, uh, that's about all I know. A lot of history. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I guess that kind of goes back to that question of can they just go about anywhere, I guess. Because we yes. always say there's no time. There's no no rules, I guess. Right? Yes. Yes, that's correct. That's yeah. correct. But, yeah, that's still a mystery for me. Uh, scary either way. Panther or... <laughs> Water baby, yeah. <laughs> Either one, you don't want to mess with. It. Yeah, so we just stayed in a tent. <laughs> I forced myself to go to sleep. You know, a lot of those tribes, you know, <laughs> they believe those water babies will eat you. You know, mm-hmm. so that's why a lot of times you won't be found. You know, they eat you all up. So. Yeah, that's pretty cool stories. But that's what that guy said up north. He said that's because they take the form of that fish, and he said that they could take you away but he was also meaning like yeah they could devour you too Mm -hmm. and so that's what he was talking about a long time ago and so i just wanted to maybe clarify that if that was a thing you know Mm -hmm. like well i mean like i know it's a thing now with serpents and good and bad but for him to say they'd take that form of that like some sort of like evil fish i guess is what he's talking the one that devours you right Mm -hmm. like that's what he was talking about and so I just didn't know at the time. Never heard of him. And mm. so he was telling us all about him at IA. Mm. But, yeah. Is that all, Chris? I think that's it for tonight. All right. All right, everybody. Well, send us your stories. Uh, whatever you may have. Paranormal, cryptid, alien. You name it. But uh, let everybody know where to follow you, Chris. Uh, you can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube as Christopher Honka Hill. Mado to all the ones that shared stories. Yes, thank you for sending in your stories and um, to me, Chris, our DMs everywhere. Thank you so much. We appreciate them, and we always look forward to sharing them and just talking about them when we when we come on the show so uh follow me at okie podcast at russell Must 49 you can add me on facebook russell sun eagle um follow us at spirit talkers podcast wherever on instagram tiktok facebook and you can listen to us wherever apple spotify let us know if you want us to come out and do a show for you guys too so and that too because mm-hmm, i know uh we're eager to come out and visit you know we want to come into all these indian reservations but oh yeah hit <clears throat> hit us up for booking uh we can come do a live podcast show we can even do an investigation uh just have a fun time, a fun event, and we'll bring we'll bring it we'll bring it for y'all. Even Russell will twerk, twerk for you guys. I'll no. twerk for a million likes. God. <laughs> no, I won't. Don't do it. I've seen. <laughs> do it, guys. Do it. No. But yeah, hit us up for booking. Um, we got a few lined up in the future, but we wanna we wanna come to a lot of places and just hang out with y'all meet y'all and just bring the noise bring the bring the spirits i guess yeah. <laughs> but yeah hit us up and like i said we're everywhere subscribe to our youtube channel it's uh, spirit talkers and i think that's it so everybody till next time Mudo. smudge up